If we give answers to people out of our own our own heads, the only the only things that we're able to draw upon are our own personal experiences, things we've read, things we've heard, and there's certainly some times in which those might be very very beneficial to people to be able to say, oh, you know, I I read this or I heard that, thought it might help you. But that which really is able to, to touch people comes, comes not from my personal experience, comes not from something I've read. I don't have that, that wealth of knowledge. It comes only from one place, which is getting out of the way so that that which needs to be spoken can flow. And the way that I know that this is how it works is because of how it happened the, the very first time, which I'll share with you. And then this has been how I've how I've committed to, to do it. Because every time you think I know the answers, it never works. So about, I don't know, maybe 12, 13, 14 years ago-ish. I've been here 21 years. So maybe I had been here seven, eight years or something like that. We were sitting in Pooja Swamiji's garden with a group and having satsang. And somebody asked a question about anger and forgiveness. Now, it was a very standard type of question, the type of things that come up frequently. And Pooja Swamiji, and at that time, he would answer all of the questions. And he turns to me and he says, Sadviji. And at first I didn't even realize that it was that I had to answer it. I thought he was asking me something. And then I realized, oh, he wants, he wants me to answer it. And I had already been doing from the beginning a lot of writing on his behalf, so articles and books and stuff like that. And, and again, a, a topic like anger and forgiveness is something that he had spoken about a lot. And so when he says, Sadviji, I closed my eyes for a moment and I did what I know how to do academically, which is shuffle index cards in my brain. I mean, as a student, before I would take an exam, I would put all of the things I needed to learn on index cards and you'd see the question on one side and the answer on the other side. Or if I had to write long papers or reports or things, I'd put all of my notes on index cards and arrange them and organize them and then write the, uh, the paper. So, so I closed my eyes and literally started in my brain to shuffle the index cards that I knew about what he answers about anger and what he answers about forgiveness. And, and I had, as I said, because I had done articles, I had done books, like I knew. And I'm shuffling index cards in my mind. And if you had said to me, or if he had said, Sadviji, in 15 minutes, get ready. You're going to have to answer that question in 15 minutes. We'll come back to you. And in the meantime, let's talk about something else. I would have been fine. In 15 minutes, I could have easily remembered and gathered in my brain enough pieces to give an intelligent few-minute answer on anger and forgiveness. But he didn't say that. And I wasn't given that 10 or 15 minutes in which to properly organize the index cards in my brain. And so as I closed my eyes and tried to do this, I started getting more and more anxious. 
like any of us, whoever has had to take an exam or whoever gets put on the spot in a situation where really like your ego, your dignity, your whole sense of identity is at stake. I mean, you know, everybody's watching you and, and it's stressful. And the thing with stress is it actually inhibits your ability to remember and to think properly, which is why so many students who study well at home, they may know the answers, they show up at school, they panic on the exam, and they can't remember. And then they get bad marks and they feel stupid and maybe their parents yell at them. And so the next, next exam, they're even more stressed. I shouldn't blank out again. I shouldn't blank out again. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. And of course that stress response ensures they're going to blank out again. So as I got more and more stressed, what I found was I couldn't remember anything. And something that had been such a common topic. I mean, if he had said, okay, leave my garden, go in your office and type me an article on anger and forgiveness, I could have brought it back in 15 minutes. But sitting there, I couldn't, I couldn't shuffle these index cards in my brain fast enough and the stress made it so I couldn't even think properly. And I then had a moment that I don't know whether I'm the only one over the age of six or seven who's had one of these moments in adulthood. I mean, we know it happens to kids, but it happened to me as an adult, which is I thought, well, if I just squeeze my eyes closed tight enough, maybe they'll actually all go away. And maybe, maybe when I open my eyes, they won't actually all be sitting there staring at me. And I literally, I closed my eyes and I squeezed them really tight. And there was, there was a part of me, there was a moment where I literally held on to that hope that I was going to open my eyes and the whole thing was just going to be a dream and I wasn't really going to be put on the spot by my guru and be on the verge of being humiliated. And I opened my eyes and of course they're all still sitting there like you all are and staring at me. And I then closed my eyes again and again tried to shuffle because now there was a lot of pressure. And I look over at Pooja Swamiji like, save me. And his eyes are closed. He's meditating. You know, like there was no way he was going to open his mouth and start giving this answer. He was, he had turned it over to me and now he was meditating. I hit a moment, maybe two or three minutes into it, in which it was literally like hitting a, a, a wall. And I realized I can't do this. I, I cannot, I have no idea what to speak. I cannot formulate even one intelligent thought. Nothing is coming to my mind now. I cannot get any of these index cards to reveal themselves to my inner eye. I cannot read them exactly. I cannot see them. And in my mind with my eyes closed, I literally bowed down at Pooja Swamiji's feet. And I folded my hands and I said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I have let you down. You have, have given me a responsibility. You had faith. You had trust. You've called upon me. And I don't have it in me. I cannot do this. I, I don't have it in me. And so as I sat there with my eyes closed, I was literally in my own mind laying at his feet and just laying it all before him and saying, I don't have it in me and I'm so sorry. And as I, as I opened my eyes, it just, it flowed out of my mouth. And what I realized later happened is by literally bowing down in my mind, what it did was it created that space 
into which grace flows. And so when I, when I speak so frequently about getting ourselves out of the way, about getting out of the way of what we think is supposed to happen, who we think we are, what we think we know, I speak it from experience. Because even as a, a star academic who could get A's on exams, because I knew I was having an exam, when caught off guard, couldn't remember anything. And even, I mean, I had been a, a star test taker. I knew how to do that. I wasn't someone who blanked out on exams. I could study. I could memorize my index cards. I could show up. I could get an A plus on an exam. But when caught off guard, when I didn't know there was going to be an exam, I mean, if I had known, I would have come prepared. But since I didn't know, in that moment, I didn't have access to my, my accumulated knowledge. You know, the facts that we accumulate throughout our life. I've read this somewhere. I've heard this somewhere. I didn't have access to that type of knowledge. And I didn't have any other, any other place from which to source wisdom. And so what I did was get out of the way, not even on purpose. I didn't even know anything was going to happen except I was just bowing to my guru. But into that space of, I can't do it, came the answers. And this is, this is now 12, 13, 14 years later, still how I do it. I'm, I'm under no more of an illusion today that I have the answers than I was then. The only times that what comes out of my mouth touches people and inspires them is when I'm able to get out of the way. When it's not my intellectual brain shuffling index cards of what I know on the subject, but it's me surrendering in the awareness that I don't know this answer. Me as this physical being with my 46 years on earth and where I've been and what I've read and what I've learned doesn't have the answer. I don't know. But what I've been incredibly, incredibly, totally undeservedly blessed with is an opportunity to serve as a vessel. And I, I don't know why I was given this opportunity, but I've stopped asking that question. It's been such a blessing that I figure, you know, if, if by chance it was given by mistake, why remind the universe? And so I just keep getting out of the way. And what I find is the more I get out of the way, the more, the more the answers come. And what's funny is in the times that I've shared that story before, several times people have said, well, so what did you answer? I mean, like, so what, what answer did you give at that time about anger and forgiveness? And I have no idea. If you say to me, if you say to me an hour from now, what did you say in satsang? I couldn't tell you. I might be able to, to recall the theme. And sometimes when I'm sharing something, it'll occur to me. I think maybe a few days ago we were talking about something like this. And I'll say, I think we just recently were on this subject. It feels familiar to me. But it's literally like something is flowing through me. And so it's not about me knowing anything. It's about me being so acutely aware of the fact that I don't know. That I guess the universe has found a very willing, willing vessel. Yeah. 